Do you ever look around our world and feel overwhelmed? From the laughs here, I think that's a yes. How can I make a difference? I am only one person. Our world has so many needs and I just don't think I can make a difference. There was an article published in the March of this year that said that Arizona has more than 14,000 kids in foster care right now. If our family fosters two of those kids from that number, there would still be more than 14,000 kids in foster care. Our missions committee shared this last week that one in seven people living in southern Arizona are food insecure and rely on our food banks for assistance. If I give all of my money to the food bank today, there would still be one in seven food insecure tomorrow. The EPA says in 2018, the U.S. generated 4.9 pounds of trash per person per day. Mm -hmm. If I reduce my amount by half, that's still a lot of trash that my neighbor's producing. <laughs> and honestly, it doesn't make a noticeable difference overall in the number in our nation. Plus, it's really hard. Do you, how do you reduce plastic consumption when our plastic is wrapped in plastic? <laughs> how do we recycle more when we're told that half of what we recycle gets thrown out anyway? And if it is recycled, it's shipped around the world to be made into something new to ship it back around the world. How do we make a difference when the world is conspiring against us? I care about our earth. I care about people who are hungry. I care about kids having a stable and loving home, but it's overwhelming. How on earth will I make a difference? I'm only one person. The disciples came to Jesus with these feelings of being overwhelmed. In the passages before this one, Jesus had been teaching the disciples. He told them a parable about a shrewd manager, teachings about serving two masters. He told them about the rich man and Lazarus. He talked about marriage and adultery and divorce. Finally, just before this passage, Jesus tells them that they have to forgive somebody seven times in one day, and if they do it again, forgive them again. The disciples are a bit overwhelmed. Faith requires all of this. We are only human. We can't change the world. We can't do it all. Jesus, they said, increase our faith. In order to do these things, they believed that Jesus needed to help them out. Increase our faith. If we only had more faith, we could do the things that you're asking of us. We can make a difference. And Jesus gives them an absurd answer. Even a tiny amount of faith can rearrange landscaping. And not just any landscaping. Here in Luke, he talks about a mulberry tree, a tree that was forbidden to be planted within 75 feet of a well because its root system was so large. And yet Jesus says a tiny amount of faith is enough to move it out of the way. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen this happen. I've seen the effects of Ian and Katrina and other hurricanes, but not the effects of faith moving a tree. I don't think Jesus expected it to happen, to be honest. I think Jesus was making a statement about faith and about God. Did you notice the request from the disciples? They asked Jesus, increase our faith. They understood that faith was a gift. Faith is not a 10-step program. They, don't, they didn't believe that you'd get more faith when you do these things right, when you go to church and read your Bible and pray. We know these things produce fruit, but the disciples knew that fruit was not faith. Increase our faith, they said to Jesus, understanding that Jesus is the one who gives faith. You thought about it that way? This is a game changer for me. I don't have to work to have more faith. Faith is a gift. I don't have to try harder or make it better. Faith is a gift from our God who gives generously. 
So if faith is a gift, the disciples said, give us more. They needed greater faith because they knew that they could not accomplish what he had just said. They knew that they were only human and did not possess enough faith to change the world as Jesus was calling them to do. They were only fishermen and common people, not the Son of Man. Increase our faith. And in his response, Jesus tells us about God. God gives faith, and God's faith is enough to do great things. True faith is that faith that trusts in God who can move mulberry bushes or move mountains, as in Matthew's version of the story. You see, the story of God in this world is a story of a God who can do great things with the tiny amount of faith that we each are given. It is not necessary for us to have more than a tiny bit of faith. A tiny bit is enough. If only Jesus had stopped there. But instead, he kept going. Jesus talks about slaves and doing what's expected. Use the language of slave, use the language of servant. Same effect here. Jesus doesn't tackle the institution of slavery. We wish he would have. Instead, Jesus makes it sound like we should work and work and work more and be expected to do more. Everyone knows that the servant serves the master. Their jobs are to serve. They are to do the work that needs to be done. They don't expect a thanks. The disciples hear themselves as the master in this story and agree. They were likely nodding along, understanding what Jesus said. You're right. Those servants should be serving. But then Jesus shifts in verse 10 and says, You are not the masters in this story. You are the servants. We are not the masters in this story. We are the servants. We are the ones who are asked to serve others, to do the work of the kingdom without expecting thanks. Jesus says, you and I are the ones who are expected to serve, not because we get thanks, but because it's the right thing to do. It's what we do to live out our faith. This is an uncomfortable message with our years of misusing this passage. We've used this passage over the years to keep women doing more and more and more work. We've told our lower income folks to keep doing more and more and more. We've told our kids to keep doing more and more and more. We even tell ourselves we have to do more. Keep working, keep serving. But hearing this from Jesus, we need to hear a different message. Jesus said in Luke 22, verse 27, that he came to serve the people, he came among the people as one who serves. Jesus told his disciples that he was among them as one who serves, and then he took off his outer garment, took on the towel of a servant, and knelt to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus said, I came to serve, and this is service. This is how Jesus lived and how Jesus called his disciples then to live. Jesus tells us today that we're not the masters, expecting others to serve us. Instead, we are the ones who are called to kneel and serve with our tiny faith, that tiny faith that God gives us to do huge things. I can't change the lives of 14,000 foster kids, but I can make a difference in one who will impact more and more and more. I can't change the food needs of one in seven people, but the food that I give, added to the food that you give, has totaled 17,000 pounds of food to the food bank in 2022. St. Mark's. You've given 17,000 pounds of food to the food bank in 2022. Good job. In September alone, we get donated about 1,800 boxes of mac and cheese. Good job. We can't completely change hunger for every person every day, but we made a difference to those families who receive the tiny bit that we do donate. I can't stop landfills from filling up, but when I choose to purchase products that are more earth-friendly, my money tells companies that I care. When I do the work of recycling, 
I teach my children and those around me that I care. All of this has ripple effects. The tiny things that we do, we do because God's faith within us can do great things. Friends, God does not call us to have faith the size of a mulberry bush or faith the size of a mountain. God calls us to use the tiny faith that we have been given by God to aspire to great things, beginning with kneeling and serving. This is the call of Christ any day that we're overwhelmed and believe that we can't do it. With God's faith planted within us, faith the size of a mustard seed, God can do great things in this world through us. Let us pray. God, we are not worthy. We cannot do all things. We know that we are not we, we don't have enough to solve all the problems in this world. We are grateful, however, that you don't call us to solve the problems in the world. You call us to use the faith that you have given us. And so God, we receive that faith, faith the size of a mustard seed or maybe even bigger. We receive the faith that you have given us, knowing that it is enough to change the world. Help us to kneel, to serve others around us, using our faith as we share your good news and your love and your mercy with the world in need. God, thank you for showing us the way. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.